Microsoft Excel is a spreadsheet application. Much like an accountant's ledger, Excel enables us to enter data and organize that data. But Excel also allows us to perform calculations on that data and to create charts. When we open Excel, we have a choice of creating a blank workbook or using an existing template. An individual workbook is also known as a file. Similar to how a notebook, a physical notebook where we might take notes for our classes, consists of multiple sheets. An Excel workbook can consist of multiple worksheets. Before we start entering data, we should get familiar with terminology for the Excel workspace. Currently, I am looking at a blank workbook. At the top, near the, the top of our window, we see what's known as the ribbon. The ribbon is broken down into multiple levels of organization, the first being tabs. The File tab, the Home tab, the Insert tab, Page Layout, Formulas, Data, Review, and View. The tab that I currently have open, the Home tab, is known as my Active tab. The tabs are broken down further into individual groups. The Clipboard group, the Font group, the Alignment group, Number, Styles, Cells, and Editing. Those groups are then uh, broken down into individual commands. So, for instance, we could say that the bold command was in the font group on the home tab. The other tabs appear uh, extremely similar to the home tab. The only exception is the file tab. When we uh, access the file tab, we are actually going into what's called backstage view. Backstage view enables us to see things on the back end of our workbook, uh, performing actions such as saving our file or printing it or changing other uh, settings. As we return to our workbook, we can look at a few other items of the workspace. At the extreme top, of my window, I see what's called the title bar. The title bar is also broken into a number of components. On the left hand side we see what's called the quick access toolbar. The quick access toolbar allows us to select commands and have shortcuts of them appear on the title bar so that if we're always using them they are very convenient. For instance, if you're regularly checking spelling, rather than having to go over to the Review tab and use the uh, Check Spelling command, I can add spelling to my Quick Access Toolbar, and I can just go up to the title bar and click on the spelling icon. Notice as I'm hovering over these commands, I see a pop-up window appear. This is uh, just a screen tip to provide some you know, help for us by explaining the purpose of the command. Also in the title bar, I see my control buttons. We just have the option of accessing help features. This command allows us to minimize the ribbon or change its display. Sometimes people feel that they would prefer to work without the ribbon taking up a large portion of their screen, so they might choose to hide the ribbon, as I have done here. Of course, we could still access the tabs and obtain those individual commands, but when we're no longer using them, uh, we don't have to worry about it taking up that dominant portion of the screen. We also have commands to minimize our window, to bring it down to the taskbar, to maximize our window, to take up the full size of our screen, uh, 
The maximize control button is actually uh, toggles between two commands, maximize and restore. Restore would bring us down to the minimize, not, not fully minimized, but to the reduced size of our window. And then close to exit the application. If we return to our terminology on Workspace, we can see that we have actually covered all of our terminology in the first column and started into the second. The next term we want to look at is the status bar, which is at the bottom of our screen. The status bar displays metadata. It also allows us to switch between various views of the worksheet. And we have access to the zoom slider to increase or decrease magnification. Wrapping up the outside of our window, we see scroll bars, both horizontal and vertical scroll bars. So now we can talk about some terminology at the top of the worksheet again, underneath the ribbon. The first item that we have is the name box. Right now the name box is displaying H14, which happens to be the cell that is selected. It's also called the active cell. I could use the name box to bring me to another cell, for instance, cell A1. If I wanted to start typing content in cell A1, I notice that it appears here as well as in the cell. I see the, the content of my cell appear in what's called the formula bar. We have a number of uh, commands within the formula bar. If I have finished this and I'm ready to you know, move forward, I can press the enter. If I'm not quite sure and I want to remove what I've done, I can use the cancel command to erase the, what I've placed in the cell so far. So let's take a look at what I mean by this term cell that I continue to use. My spreadsheet is composed of columns. Columns run vertically across the worksheet and are represented with letters. And rows, which run horizontally and are represented by numbers. The intersection of a column and a row is called a cell. Individual cells can contain one of three things, text, values, and formulas. The difference between text and a value is essentially that a value is just something that can be used in a calculation, data that can be used for a formula or function to perform a calculation. I'm going to return to my blank workbook and start to add some sample data in here. I said that a workbook could contain multiple worksheets. I could add sheets down at the bottom of my window just by using the new sheet command. I could also go ahead and rename this sheet. We'll rename this budget. Now you'll notice here that let's say that I uh, have a problem with the fact that this text is a little bit too long for the cell because presumably I want to be adding data in these, these areas. And now I can no longer see the full text of what is in cell A7. I can modify my column width I could do this manually by just, you know, going to the area between A and B. And notice that my cursor changes 
and I can click and drag to modify the width of my cell. I could also select the entire column and on the Home tab I can go to the Format command in the Cells group and I could choose Auto Fit and then Excel would make a decision on how large that column should be based on its content. After I've entered these numbers, I might want to apply some formatting for, to them. I'm going to go ahead and select them. I do this by, excuse me, by clicking and dragging through the numbers that I would like to select. I'm going to go up to the number group on the home tab and I'm going to format these in a counting number format which allows us to both see the dollar sign and obtain two decimal places. If I had wanted less than the two decimal places, I could use the decrease indent command. If I had wanted more, I could use the increase indent command. Let's imagine now that I want to make some changes to my worksheet. Maybe I want to include my budget for all months. of the, the year. So I no longer need January here. I'm going to, in these additional columns, continue to display my budget for all of the years. I can use the auto fill handle to avoid uh, additional typing here. If you notice my cursor changes when I get to the bottom right hand uh, corner of my selection. The selection itself is called a range. A range is simply a rectangular group of cells that could be anything from a single cell to the whole worksheet. So now that my cursor has changed to display the autofill handle, I'm just going to select and drag until I get to the end of the year, December. Now let's imagine that we are going to go ahead and use the same numbers. So I'm going to use the autofill handle again to just copy these numbers across. Now notice some of my months can easily be read like May, June, and July and others are a little bit too large for the cell. I could certainly increase the column width but maybe I don't want the column width to change for each um, each month, or maybe I want to conserve space. Another option that I have, and I'm going to go ahead and select all of these January through December, I'm going to change the alignment of my text. So you could see that I could you know, use vertical text or rotate my text up. Oops, looks like, sorry, I thought I had forgotten to select that. I could even look at my text on an angle if I was interested in, in doing that. Now this budget is interesting because I really might want this to span all of my work as if it was a um, heading or title. For that I would use the merge command which is in the alignment group and this changes all of our cells A1 through M1 into a single cell. So I've merged it into, into one cell. I'm going to go ahead and remove some of these numbers to show you a different way that we could have completed these numbers rather than just using the autofill handle. So with these selected, I'm actually going to use the clear command and I'm just going to erase the content of the cells. Another way that I could have copied these or filled in the rest of my worksheet was by using the copy command and then choosing the paste option. When I paste, I actually have a number of choices. I can paste, you know, what I've copied. I could paste just the formula, which we haven't looked at yet. Um, I could paste the formula and the formatting, which would be our accounting format here with the dollar sign and two decimal places. I could keep the formatting of where my paste is going, or sorry, is coming from, its source. 
where I could keep the formatting of the destination. Should have been another one of my choices. Maybe that my destination hasn't actually changed. I could remove edges if I had colored lines around my cells, which we'll take a look at in a second. I could have maintained the width of a previous cell. So there's a number of options for pasting. Also, I could use the clipboard. I'm going to go ahead and use this dialog box launcher. All of my groups that have this icon on the bottom right hand corner uh, have additional commands. This is called the dialog box. Excuse me, dialog box launcher. So there's one for clipboard, font, alignment, number. Then we see here there there aren't there is not one for these last few, three groups. The clipboard can hold up to 24 items. So I could actually copy all of these. Maybe I'll even copy this as well. And then when I want to paste, I could simply click the item that I had wanted to paste in that area. So the clipboard can hold up to 24 items, which can be useful if we you know, might not want to uh, paste right after we've cut that particular item. We might want to go back to it. When you're done with the clipboard, we can clear the items in the clipboard if we're not interested in holding on to them longer. I'm just going to go ahead and fill this one with the autofill handle since it's a little bit quicker. Now we're going to go ahead and put in a total. For the total, this is the first time when we're going to use a formula. So I'm interested in knowing how much I needed for my budget for the month of January. When you're entering a formula into Excel, you start with the equal sign. And we could actually just write 500 plus 200 plus 300 plus 200. And we would obtain the correct answer, 1,200. Although this is not the ideal way to be creating this formula. So you'll notice the answer is appearing here. In my formula bar, I see the actual formula that I typed. The problem with this is that it doesn't maintain uh, flexibility of our worksheet for the future. So let's say that I made a mistake. You know, maybe the car payment went up in January. It was actually 350 When I make this change to cell B6, my 1200 didn't update to 1250. I would actually have to go in and manually change the 300 to 350. Well, what if I forgot to do that? Now I have incorrect uh, data. An easier way to go about this would be to use the cell reference instead of the number. In fact, we should never enter numbers into our formulas. We should always use the cell reference. The cell reference is simply its name um, listed by its column letter and then row number. So instead of 500, we would actually use cell B4. And we'll notice that that highlights as we put it in the formula. Instead of 200, we would use cell B5. Instead of 350, we'll use cell B6. And then instead of 200, we're going to use cell B7. This allows us to create a formula that will update uh, when other items change in the uh, cells that we have referred to. Now, right now, we can't actually see our number, our answer. Instead, we see these pound signs. These indicate to us that this column is not large enough for the data. So I need to increase the size of the January column. Let me go ahead and do that through 
the auto fit command. Now in order to copy this formula through the rest of the chart, I could just use my control C and control V. Of course I'm going to have the same issue with my column size. I'm just going to go ahead and increase the column width for all of these. So maybe that was a little bit too large. There we go. So I could have simply cut and pasted my formula. And notice when I did this, the, the formula actually moved over. Instead of being B4 plus C5 plus, oh sorry, B4 plus B5 plus B6 plus B7, the numbers in January, it actually copied over the numbers in February. So I could do that just with copy and paste, or I could use the auto fill handle. And you'll notice that all of these are coming up with the total of the columns of the cells directly above them. There are a few other ways to perform this calculation as well. One is to use the auto sum command, which is a shortcut that automatically will add up the cells. Excel will select a range and we can look in our formula bar or on the worksheet itself to see if that range is correct. It usually is, but if it was not, we could obtain a new range just by selecting the new range. Oops, it looks like I've made a mistake there, so I'm just going to go ahead and use the auto sum again. We can also type in this formula if we happen to remember it. So I do, it's equal sum, and then my range, which would be G4 to cell G7. Or I could use the insert function command. And the insert function command shows us all of our various options organized by category. Fortunately, sum is right here for me to, to get right away. And I simply verify that the range that I wanted was actually H4 to H7. And I'll hit OK. So now that we've had a lot of practice with that, I'm just going to go ahead and use that autofill handle to complete the rest of the, the totals. Now I'm going to go ahead and add some formatting. Probably would be a good idea to put a border here. This makes it clear and distinct that we are definitely talking about the total as opposed to another expense like say clothing or textbooks. We could also go ahead and add some changes in font as well as changes in color. I'm going to use the auto fit for my columns. Maybe I want to change every other line to increase readability. So I could go ahead and do that. I'm holding down the control key to select um, multiple ranges that are not continuous. We'll go ahead and apply a color there so it makes it easier to read. Maybe I'll give a more distinct color to the total. I could also underline text. Maybe I'll underline the budget. Maybe I will use the increase font size command to make the word budget larger. Maybe I'll even go ahead and add in a colored fill to the cell.
If you're not happy with your color choice, we could use individual themes, which are available on the Page Layout tab. And these would change our um, formatting only for the areas that we've already, already uh, chosen to add a fill to. So we can modify our theme, but still maintain uh, the formatting that we've selected previously. Now let's imagine that I have forgotten an expense. I could add a row. I'm just going to select the row where I want to add this data. I'm going to use the insert command to add an additional row. I go ahead and place this in. If it's going to be clothing, Notice this is following the formatting of my previous data. The formulas, I don't know if you've noticed this or not, but the formulas where I actually use the sum command as opposed to typing in a formula manually are actually updating for me, although these are not. Let me go ahead and change this and I'll see that it's not. If I go back to the formula here, it's only looking at the cells that I manually put in. However, my sum formulas, places where I've used the sum formula, are continuing to change with each number. So there is a benefit to using a preset formula in Excel rather than composing a formula manually. I just went ahead and used the autofill handle to copy that sum formula over. Now you might be wondering exactly what I've done with the formulas here and it's a little bit hard to follow when we're just looking into the formula bar. If I actually can go into formula view, I do this by pressing the control button and then the tilde. The tilde is in the top left hand corner of your keyboard underneath the escape key. And this allows us to see the formulas for all of our functions. I'm going to go ahead and leave it here for a minute and give you a second to look at the fact that these formulas have changed to indicate the range with the additional new row. So because this copied the formatting of the data in the row immediately prior, let me go ahead and take the formula view off so we can see the entire worksheet. I do actually have to change my fill. Now what here, I actually put in a white fill when I meant to select no fill. Just so it would be consistent with what was uh, placed earlier in the worksheet. I'm going to go ahead and preview other views to the worksheet. My normal view, my page layout view, which shows us how this would appear on the actual page. At this point I might realize that I should actually go onto the page layout tab and change the orientation to landscape. But of course I still can't fit all my data with this in landscape orientation. One option is to decrease the width of some of my cells. I could change the margins but I don't know that that would actually get all of the months of the year there for me. So if I was insistent on all of the months of the year fitting here, I might have wanted to start to decrease the size of some of these columns. I can also change to a page break view, which allows us to see the more concise format throughout the entire uh, 
set of data exactly how our material would print, how many pages would be involved, and where that split would occur. I also wanted to show you something that's happening in the status bar. Let's say that we were to select all of our totals. You can see down here in the bottom, it gives us some data. So our full budget for this year was $14,110. I've selected 12 items. And here's the average. My average expense for a month is $1,175.83. So there's just some metadata that helps us sort of summarize what's going on with our selection. It's also a great place to check that you have the right area selected because I could quickly see at a glance here that I'd selected 12 cells. When we are getting towards the end of our document, we probably want to go ahead and save. And we might want to print our data as well. I can print in the backstage view by going to the uh, print command. You can see how my material would appear on a printed page. And I can make changes. For instance, I could center this on my page. and I could decide that I wanted to see the grid lines or even the row and column headings. The last two things I'm going to do in this workbook are to add a footer and to go ahead and um, edit my document properties. If I go into the insert tab I see the header and footer command. Notice when I insert, when I went to my header and footer, a new tab appears on my ribbon. This is called a contextual tab. A contextual tab is a tab that only appears in a certain context. In this case, when I'm working with the header and footer. I don't need to see the header all the time. I only need to see it when I'm actually working with it, which would be right now. As you enter either the header or the footer, you'll notice that it's essentially broken up into three cells. In these cells, I could type data. I'm going to go ahead and use my horizontal scroll bar to move over. Or I could put in content using various automatic elements, such as my page number and number of pages. I could add my current date and time. I could add the name of my file or the name of my sheet, you know, down here, the budget example, name of my, my sheet. You can see now that we are outside of the header, that first, that contextual tab disappeared, but often also I can see the actual data that would be placed into the header. The footer is very similar. It also contains three cells, and we could put data into those individual cells. Finally, I'm going to edit my document properties. I do this by going to the File tab to get into Backstage View. I was able to edit these as quickly as just clicking on the, the items themselves and typing in new data. Document properties allow us to um, add more data to our file. This We could actually search on these document properties at a, at a later date. It's just a, a method of organization. So I want to summarize what we've done in this particular video. We've looked at the Microsoft Excel workspace. We created a new workbook with two worksheets. We added data in the cells, and we also added values in the cells. Values are cell contents that can be later used in formulas. We looked at the sum formula. 
We also added formatting. We changed our numbers to the accounting format. We talked about increasing and decreasing decimals. We merged the cell with the budget heading in it. And we added a fill to a number of our cells and a border at the bottom of row 8 to mark our total. We looked at some of the various views that are available in Excel so that we could see how our data would print. And we also looked at going into the backstage view to print our document. And finally, we added document properties to enable us to give, it, give the file a little bit more organization. Oh, and you know, I forgot we also adjusted our column widths so that all of the data would fit between the, in the cell because we noticed that using the pound signs, uh, that, excuse me, that when the pound signs appear, that means that the cell is not large enough for its data. We also used the autofill handle as a way of copying and pasting. It was a little bit faster than the clipboard, although the clipboard can hold up to 24 items. So there's that benefit in being able to copy and paste things, but m perhaps not necessarily paste them right away or copying you know, individually each time. The clipboard could help uh, facilitate that process a little quicker. And we looked at the clear command to erase the contents of a cell. So that concludes our video on creating a worksheet and uh, entering data into that worksheet.